Hi, I'm Phil Esposito, and today I'm up front on Off the Record. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Cake Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Our panel has a dude who swears on his website that, quote, I know once I'm done with that show, I'm going to be asked back again and again. We'll see Phil Esposito up front today. The great, the legendary Phil Esposito. I, I kind of sound like Larry King here. I got to drop that act. I'm <laughs> yeah, kissing your ass. Of that. You interviewed for the <laughs> Islander job. Would you have lasted more than 40 days? No, I wouldn't have lasted one day, I don't think. After the, the initial interview, uh, I, it was apparent to me that. Uh, that was something I couldn't do. So was it bizarre at the time, the questions Charles Wong obviously went on, he dismissed Neil Smith in 40 days. D did you realize, eh, maybe this guy would be a tough uh, guy to work for? Well, he's totally hands-on, obviously, and I don't think that's the right way to go. You hire somebody to do the job, let him do the job. And I'm not so sure Mike Milbury still is not involved in that thing. So let me ask you this, Phil. If you got that job, whether you're Garth Snow or Neil Smith, and the owner comes to you and says, I want to sign... DiPietro to a 15-year contract. I want to do this. What do you do? First place, I try to talk him out of and it. And you can't do that. He says, I want to do it. What do you do? Do you quit? Hey, you're the owner. It's your money. You do what you want to do. But I'm telling you, and on record, it's the wrong thing to do. Let's now, go. 10 years would have been okay. I think 10 years at four and a half, five million $5 million. Now he's only 33, 34. The last three years, if you want to trade him, you can't. But till 40, it's going to be a very difficult thing to trade. Let's look around the league. Some questions to fire at Phil Esposito. Todd Bertuzzi, now in Florida. Does yeah. he turn it around this year? I think he turns it around to the point of getting 30, 35 goals. But I still don't see the Panthers making the playoffs, even with Todd Bertuzzi. But uh, we'll watch, and watch them and the way they go. But Bertuzzi will score on the power play. And if he plays with Jokinen... He will get 35 How about reporting. the guy they gave up to get him, uh, Roberto Luongo? Will he get the Canucks into the playoffs? I think Roberto Luongo is an elite goaltender, maybe the best in the game right now. I still don't think the Vancouver Canucks have enough to get to really? the playoffs. Chris Pronger, if you were an Edmonton Oiler, if you were his teammate last year, what would you think about him now? I wouldn't think very, you know, I wouldn't give one damn because it could happen to me. And, uh, I mean, I, I'd be upset that he didn't want to be there, but... I know it wasn't his choice. I mean, something, when you're married and uh, you've got a family and... Did you ever feel that pressure where you... you... No. In my day, mm -hmm. I'd say, go home. Leave me alone. I'm staying. That's it. I did it when I went to Florida. I said, you're not coming? Don't come. I'm and and you're talking about who? Your wife? Uh-huh. Would you have an enforcer on your team now if you were running a National Hockey League team? Because some teams are going with, some are without. Well, only if he can contribute a bit. I mean, if he can play two or three minutes a game and contribute maybe five to ten goals in a year, absolutely. Leafs have gone from an old school coach, a guy that you knew uh -huh. well in Pat Quinn, to a new guy, a younger guy with systems in Paul Maurice. Is that an upgrade in coaching? Well, first off, I really like Paul Maurice, and I think it, it, he's really a good coach, and I, I like what he's going to try to do. But let me make it my mind. I thought Pat Quinn did his best job coaching last year in a lot of years. Even though he didn't make the playoffs. Even though he didn't make the playoffs. Sundin was out for a lot of time. He didn't really have a goaltender. He had a 40-year-old guy but with a bad back. Don't you feel like watching Pat last year, like maybe the game had evolved around him and maybe evolved past, past him? No, why should it? Because he's 64, 65? Because it's a scientific game. No, I'm not talking about his age at all, but it's a scientific game now. And to be a coach, you've got to match lines, you've got to have systems. And he was the kind of guy who went and said, go out there and play for me, boys. It's a scientific game. What yes, it is. What are you talking about, Michael? It's no different than it was 20 years well, that's ago. That's why I wouldn't have you as my coach, the... because you don't uh, understand that the game oh, has changed. give me a break. Power play, power play, power play. And the Leafs had a tremendous power play, or else they wouldn't even be in where they were. And the other thing is that's where you play your systems. Yes, you've got systems. Defensively, you have a responsibility. It hasn't changed. Offensively, be creative. And if you can do that, you're going to be fine. I think it's official. This man, Phil Esposito, is warmed up. Tell me about XM Radio. I'm looking forward to doing it again. Start October 3rd, 4th. What's to the name 6, of the show? 204. Uh, in the slot. <laughs> I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> you but, are a guy who spent a lot of time there. And you know what? You're going to I'm not even going to ask you. You're going to stay in that seat. You're going to do the panel. And you're going to return later on for next question. You good with that? I am good with that. But I want to say one thing right now. Rent a goalie. I'm on it. It starts on Sunday night at 9 30. Third episode, Phil Rock. Panel's next. Won the cup in 1970. Fooled around with a little bit. Did something I shouldn't have done. And I'll tell you about it in the next question. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Cake Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight.
Be careful when you say that fighting is bad. Remember, there is both good and bad fighting. There's good and bad fighting, right, Phil Esposito? Sure, there's good and bad fighting. Sometimes you gotta fight, but you know what? Often. I'll get your opinion on that. Great to welcome the Hall of Famer to the set, Judah Katz. You acted and did a great yeah. job. Gemini nominated Alan Eagleson, right, in Canada, Russia, 72. Welcome to OTR. Thank you very welcome much. Welcome back. Thank I really mean that because you were here yesterday, right? I showed up a day in I advance. showed up a day early. Yes, we like that kind of <laughs> eagerness. I've been here ever since. <laughs> Mark Pavlich, welcome to Off the Record. You're the president of Maximum Fighting Championship. Right. You got one of your guys going to the big time, right? Yeah, he's going uh, November 10th. The UFC. Excellent. Tell us more about that later on. Nikki Davis, everybody knows you. Do you actually? Did you give up your apartment? Do you sleep in that chair? No, I don't. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm here. Though. You are a regular. Welcome to the show. So you can take the enforcer out of hockey. The league may very well have done that, and that is fine, but you can never take the need for one out of hockey. And if you take the enforcer out of hockey, who enforces? The Panthers will go without. Todd Bertuzzi made the point that you don't want your $5 million guys dropping the gloves. Two nights ago, Alexander Ovechkin did it. Do you like a star player who stands up for himself? Um, I don't think the guys should fight, but once in a while you have to stand up for yourself. I, I totally disagree, Phil. Sorry to start out the show no this problem. way. No problem. But I think it makes a huge difference when guys like Jerome McGinley fight. It really jacks up the team. You know where uh, it makes uh, a huge difference? When they fight and they get hurt. That's when it makes a huge difference. That's right. Big guy yeah. like where McGinley the fights, time, gets hurt. Where was the last time someone got legitimately hurt in a hockey fight that you can remember the, the, the on the problem is hockey, you don't know if they get hurt. They might have, their hands what? may get sore. They may not Give be able to score goals as much. Give me a medical report that shows that they're hurt in any way. McGinley actually hurt his hand. Hurt his hand and came back the next game and scored two goals. No, no, so the hand was not hurt. It's dumb though. It's a it's high risk. It's too just, high risk. Just like you have two-way two hockey money, players, you you, we, sh we should have two or three-way players, guys who can also drop their gloves and fight, but also play it's hockey. It's a great motivational tool I think, you know, I think the time the and the team. goon is How gone. It it's team? a motivational tool. When you know a guy like Jerome McGinley says, that's it, I'm dropping my gloves. No one else is going to step up and do it, so I'm going to do it. The only guy motivates is the guy who's 15, 16, 17 on the bench, hoping he gets hurt to get a chance to play. That's who motivates your best player. That's who motivates your best player in a fight. No, you don't, but sooner or later you have to stick up for yourself, but I'm not for it. I mean, my whole life we were protected, you know, guys like Bobby you, and I. You had a guy Absolutely. on your team that you knew that he would do the job for Absolutely. You. And the issue, I mean, every team in the National Hockey League is wrestling with that because that guy is now exposed because if he gets significant ice time all of a sudden now, the fact that maybe he's not a great skater creates a huge problem. And that's the fear because you, I will go with a superstar in the fighting if I know they're willing, they're going to stick up for themselves. And yeah. if I'm a coach of an opposing team, you don't want I'm going to go fight. after this guy every point. period very and very make him stick up for himself. Very good point. Look you know, at very good yesterday. Point. He gets in a fight, it makes headline news. That brings more fans to the game. And that's what NHL that's hockey problem. needs right now. If that's what you need. No. If no. you need to sell, sure if you need fighting to sell hockey, then there's a problem with the game. We need everything to sell hockey. There's a problem with the game. Hockey doesn't have a good hockey. Hockey does not have a good television deal. And they're going to get better television deals. If they've more fighting. we got to sell it every if there's more fighting, if you fighting, want to go scoring, see, what about the actual game? Like, go to a play. boxing ring. Go to a well, boxing ring. Well, or the octagon. Uh, or the oh, octagon. There you go. That's all the I can <laughs> tell you is when you're sitting in the stands and when there's a fight. I went to a preseason game in Las Vegas between Colorado and Los Angeles just recently, and Avery got into it with somebody, and everyone in that play stood up. Yeah, but but it doesn't but it they stood up but it does not help sell the game because in the end you still need talented players oh, to sell absolutely. the game. Not, if your talented that's players sure, are fighting and they get back hurt, you well. can do nothing. You but, need the back end of that as well but, with but, fighting, violence but when in the you sport watch is always going to be there. There's no fighting in playoff hockey. It's playoff hockey not unbelievably exciting. There's no fighting in. No one fights. 
when someone gets playoff hockey comes down to one thing, right? goaltending. That's right. Wait, I want to ask you guys because I was okay. watching Ray Emery play last night against the Maple Leafs. Oh, you're cutting me off. I'm cutting you off, Phil. Okay. Because okay. to tell you the truth, <laughs> I wanted to hear me, <laughs> and I, I believe people all across you know, this country want, wanted to I hear, want me. To hear you too. <laughs> Since you're the host, I want to hear you. <laughs> so I was wondering, uh, given the way Emery played and played at times last year, about the sense who gave the job to Martin Gerber, the number one job. Every um, goaltender wants to start. Do you want your backup goaltender, though, pushing for the number one position? Because Emery said gently, I'm working towards playing as much as I can and pushing Gerber. If he's not working towards that, he shouldn't be on your team. It shows a lack of character in him by playing see, that role. See, that's interesting. Because it's 100% lack because, of character. Because, because if you're pushing for the job of a guy who's been given the job, doesn't that make you less of a team player? Because what's good for the team is shut up and play. I think there's a difference between pushing for the number one job and like not talking to the other goalie, which we've seen in the past, yeah. uh, uh, undermining the other guy, talking negatively about the other guy. I think that, 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 that that's a your, different situation. The second your backup goalie takes the position that he is not going to be the number one goalie, you need to find another backup goalie that has the mentality that to Phil? become. You, you got to have this desire to want to push the other guy because you want to play. And but a lot of but times you, you get a veteran. If you get a veteran there that's been around, like if Sean Burke gets another job. He knows no, he's a backup and he's not going to... There's nothing wrong with wanting to be the starting goalie. But if you're pushing that starting goalie in a negative way, or and I, I think, I, I, heard, I, I love Ray Emery as a goalie, but what he's saying basically is that I'm going to steal the guy's job. And I don't think that's, that's being no, part of the team. No, I he's going to steal. He's, he's, no, that's what he's saying you know, underneath. That's the, that's the hidden message, though. I want, you know, I want well, his job. He, Maybe it should have been his job in the first place. But he yeah, should, but, but he right. should well, want his job, Hold on, though. hold on. Phil Esposito just pointed I something totally out. I totally agree with you. <laughs> Nick... This guy should have had the job in the first place. Yeah, but he doesn't have the job. You got to be, yeah. he's still got to be a team player. There's a thing about chemistry. And if that chemistry between them isn't working and something's not going on, I coach, right? I coach yeah. basketball. I didn't understand the value of chemistry. Yeah. And you want your bench guys to push the starters, right. but you still want them to work with the starters but and make it together. In a team. And if you're there trying to like, backstab the guy or say negative things or you're in the media insinuating that you want his job, I don't taking, know how good it's going to be. Emery's taking the position as being the backup goalie, and that's bad. You don't job. have to do it publicly, though. You can be uh, in the you can practice. Hard the practice, you can push him here. in practice, but you don't have to go up. The, 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 the other thing we're missing here is that Ottawa has a chance of winning a cup this year, and, and I think they, they, it was proven last year they couldn't win a cup with Emery. A guy a like Martin year. Gerber, he's been a proven and number one. No and that's why they want I, I got to ask you, before I ask you about the DVD coming out. You don't look like you shaved. Did you go home last night, or did you actually stay here in the Stayed building? Stayed here, slept the whole time. <laughs> uh, so the DVD, Canada Russia '72. <laughs> yes, tell me about it. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It's fantastic. The broadcast version on CBC is a great show. The the, uh, the uncut version on DVD is even better, Phil. And Phil Esposito is going to be watching. Who he doesn't like the terms uncut version? We'll take a break. A reminder of the OTR podcast. Go to tsn.ca and download. We'll ask these guys the question. Preseason prices, are they fair? You know who I really hated in the Hab back in the 1970s? I'll tell you in the next question. Called 911. I used my judgment to call 911. Turn down, get a hook here. Anything could have happened. We can't have anyone freak out out there. I cannot remember everything. <laughs> uh, yes, upon further review, it does appear there was a slight overreaction. Terrell says he's happy as could be, didn't overdose, didn't try to take his own life. Now let's wait until Bledsoe underthrows him a few more times. That may change. <laughs> life with Terrell. It's certainly an adventure. Is it worth it? Is he a necessary distraction, given how good he is? If they win and the players and the team make more money, he's worth it. Phil, you know why he's not worth it? Why? He's been kicked off the last three teams that he's played with. 
Well, he left he's, San Francisco by choice. No, he was a free really. agent, wasn't he? Wrong. No, he they, wasn't free, but they, they didn't want him. They could have easily re upped him. They, 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 they don't want this guy. He's that too much they can't for find someone to babysit him because he's the most exciting football player in the game right now. So if you're an owner and you have the opportunity to get him, why do these teams keep continually trying to get because him? Because he's good. But they're, yeah, exactly. They believe yeah, he's but good. They and once, they're trying to find someone to get him, they let him go. But. Yeah, when but they, they realize realize that he's too, too, he's too much of a problem. Listen, if there's any coach who can be able, should be able to handle him, it would be Parsons. Bill Barcells. Like, right. if there's anyone who can well, handle him. Yeah. Doesn't that demean the job the last guy did? Yeah, of course it, it does. You it does. know, like Parsons. Yeah, but it does. Yeah. It doesn't it make the organization look unbelievably Reed, arrogant. It, it was so Andy Reid, and That's Andy right. Reid is a quality coach, and the Eagles look really good this yeah, but you year. Know, you know, Andy Reid may have been a quality coach, but you know what? He doesn't have the right demeanor. You know, you know what was great? If you saw Parcel yesterday when they, when they, when they talked to him, and he seemed like he could give a rat's ass about what Exactly. You know what? Who cares? That's just. And that's how you got to treat him. You cannot give him the attention he's looking for. Yeah, don't shine you the light gotta, on Terrell. I'm not sure it's working that well so far, though. No, I mean, no, Terrell you, still continues, outside of even yesterday, to be the story in Dallas and a I, huge distraction. He is, he is a distraction in that sense, but you know what? The, the thing is, in the NFL, it's such a money-driven sport. Right. And all they care about is winning. They don't care about anything else. Okay, because so you know let me what? ask you about that. About what people care about. The 3 0 Cincinnati Bengals faced the Patriots on the weekend. Last year's leading tackler, Odell Thurman, was suspended for the rest of the season. This week, he became the sixth Cincinnati Bengal to be charged with the crime. Cincinnati has got a legitimate shot this year. If you're a Bengals fan, do you care about the fact that your squad's team's picture probably has a bunch of guys holding up numbers underneath it? I, I care if I'm an owner, but uh, you, care, you should as care fan, if you're an owner. As a fan, doesn't care. Cincinnati has not win. Cincinnati has not been in like playoff contention like this ever. They will sell their soul to get to the There's playoffs. There's a huge difference though between Terrell Owens' distraction and these kind of distractions. I, I, I was, I, I you was equating the two. Yeah. You, no, but there's, no, but there's a huge, there's a huge difference. And th this here, as a fan, you can, and just selling your soul to the devil almost, just so you can have some wins in Cincinnati. It's not. Well, it can't welcome, be that welcome, important. Welcome to professional sports. It cannot sports be that in the important. States, it that's cannot what they'll be do. that this important. This is what I read about the Bengals lately. They're going to be picking up Burt Reynolds. He's going to come in and be their quarterback. They're gonna, <laughs> and they're oh, still, Judah, you're being silly. <laughs> they, they're going to be holding. Tryouts at the local jail, and uh, th they'll be just fine. Yeah. Well, they, they might have to go to jail to practice if all and the players are there. Let me ask you a question, Mark. Why did you say in the United States? It happened because in it Canada is a, too. Because for some reason, well, okay. in yeah. North America. Listen, I'm not much better. better. Right. It also happens in Europe. Well, with let's the not say players, North America because so. I'm a proud Canadian, but the Americans do do it much bigger. And That's they because put, of the publicity. The publicity, sure, but for some reason, us Canadians, we're kind of shy no, to do that. I think what problem? you were saying was Americans are criminals. No, 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 they're capitalists to the highest form. And but that's but, the, but that's the problem. There's Maybe nothing. we should become goddamn commies around here. <laughs> no, but that's the problem, though, because of the fact that every NHL team makes a profit before they even snap a football before the season. No one's worried about making any money anymore. All they care about is winning. And they don't have to worry about making money, so they win at all costs. But you can't have guys right. going to jail, six players arrested, and that's okay. <laughs> no, like, that's just unbelievable. I'm not saying it's, it's okay, body. but I'll tell you right now, the fans <laughs> of Cincinnati will turn a blind eye to that. As long well, as they the keep winning. Well, the fans of Cincinnati deserve whatever they're going to get in the end. That's well, let's not forget, say. though. They the, guy whatever they get. the one that's hurt the most is the guy that did it. That's His right. career is finished, basically. Well, You're a Tampa guy, finished. right? Chris Sims, quarterback for the uh -huh. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, fortunately out of intensive care. Now, you don't get into intensive care unless your wow. life is in danger. The Buccaneers quarterback suffered a ruptured spleen on Sunday, yet returned to finish the game. Who's the onus on here? Does it have to be on the team to try to prevent a guy from injuring it's gotta himself? Be, it's got to be on the team. Gotta the the team, the they've saved these guys millions of dollars. Yeah, they got to protect yeah. them and keep them safe. Right. And I think it was, I think it could have been irresponsible for him to put him back in the game. And well, he went back the in the thing is, he wanted to play, though. So, so, and what and what he he wants they, they so what if he wants to play, though? They got 15 doctors on the sidelines. They don't know that they need to get new doctors. 15 doctors, someone couldn't figure out that he was They need to get new doctors. They work for the owners of the team, so the team is the onus. If you put, see, that's the problem, right? If you put together a card, right? You got guys in the ring and they're going at it. You have a vested interest to keep that fight going, right? That's right. Well, but that's at the same time, as I also pay three doctors to sit at ringside to make the assessment if exactly. someone's okay or not. That is off me. I, I'm not a doctor. I'm a promoter but that puts on large fighting events. But the fact that events. you're paying them may make a suggestion that they're going to have a bias, well, right? I'm not, saying, I'm not taking no. this to your world as much as it is in the National no, Football League. No, it might. Hold on, Phil. Are you defending him? What, are you yes, from the same hometown? Hold, right. hold, right. hold on, Phil. Are you from the same hometown? Yes, yes we, we are. are. And, and do you, in fact, know members of his family? I <laughs> certainly Who do. Who do you know in his family? This old man used to drop the puck just a little bit on my side. So <laughs> now, his, his old man is a Hall of Fame official. <laughs> yes, right. My Hall father, Matt Pavlich. Right, and your uncle? My uncle is Marty, who won four Stanley Cups with Detroit. So, do you guys not feel there's a kinship here that goes on the show? 
none of us can contend with? Oh, uh, my Lord. And now, you guys are related, aren't you? Not Absolutely. really. Right. Well, we, we could be. He we, did something for CBC, and I work for CBC. Right. Oh, there could I be feel for you CBC. working for that. <laughs> Don't worry, it's a good job. I enjoy it. Oh, okay. Guys, good thank you. you all for doing Off the Record. Before we go, tell me about your fighter going to UFC. Yes, yeah, going to UFC October 10th, Jason McDonald, and then uh, my upcoming fight card November 10th in Edmonton. So. And the name of your promotion is? It's the Maximum Fighting Championship. Mixed martial arts. Thanks for doing the show, man. Oh. I know on your website you said, oh, they'll want me back. Well, and I can, I'm going to ask this guy, Nick Davis, you do the show a lot. Should he come back and do the show? I again? think he should come back, as long as he's not with Phil Esposito. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? I'm just, I'm just, we got, uh, we get a shot of him? You may have the shiniest hair we've had on the show oh, in a long time. I, it is. I didn't mean to. Yeah. 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 On that note, as we go to break, we want to know your thoughts. Yes. Here's something that we got from me. Phil Esposito standing by for next question. Hey, Michael, what do you think Terrell has up his sleeve next? I'm thinking he puts in a bid to buy the team and fire Parcells. <laughs> Who knows? More OTR in a moment. Bunny. Oh. Ooh. I do not know exactly what he means. Don't be such a dummy. Next question. Next question, man. For smaller the better. You've got to give the little bugger some credit. I know one guy who's not going to say next question. It's this man, Phil Esposito. Here we go. Does Sidney Crosby deserve the C? Not yet. No, he's too young. But who cares about captains anyway? Who will win the Stanley Cup this year? I picked the San Jose Sharks. Will Garth Snow make a great general manager? No. What player <laughs> in the league today or ever in history would you sign to a 15-year contract? Nobody. Absolutely nobody. How come your buddy Eagleson didn't get you a 15-year guarantee? Because he's not my buddy. Beyond Henderson's goal, name another moment that really helped define the 72 Summit Series. The crap we went through in Russia. <laughs> While in Russia in 72, be truthful, did you ever go to a nightclub with Harry Sinden and John Ferguson? No. You being honest with me, Phil? Being honest. All right. A nightclub in Moscow in 72? If we would have found a nightclub, we would have been there. They wouldn't have been. Tell me your best Stanley Cup story, what you did with the cup. Well, we didn't get to keep the cup. The only thing uh, was one with the lightning. I took it to four different bars. And uh, we Didn't you steal a cop's motorcycle? Oh, once? geez, I did do that in, in 1970, <laughs> the first cup. We, Johnny McKenzie and I put the cup in the sidecar and took it as Frankie the Cop was chasing us down the street. <laughs> you, you're known to be superstitious. Very. Name two. Number one, I hated cross sticks in the dress room. Guys would get hurt all the time. Good philosophy at a urinal, too. Go. <laughs> and number two, I don't know, if we won the game, and I'd go to the same toll, especially in Boston. I'd always do that. Who's cheaper, you or Tony? My brother. Who's a cheaper drunk, you or Tony? Me. <laughs> Why didn't you ever wear a helmet? Because we weren't, I don't know, they just weren't there and I didn't care about them. Did you comb your hair between periods ever? Yes. Can you curse on satellite radio? Absolutely. stinking lutely <laughs> Who's better, who's better Phil? You or Dr. Phil? Hell with him. <laughs> Who threw the hardest hit you ever took? Oh, Jay, uh, Jay Wells. Which guy in the 70s Canadians team did you just hate at the time? The only guy was Terry Harper. He used to piss me off. Does your ass still hurt from falling in 1972? Absolutely not. I had a lot of fat there. <laughs> and you're looking slim and, and trim still right do. now. <laughs> Phil Esposito, always a pleasure. Come back soon. Thank you, Michael.
Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Michael Landsberg's clothing supplied by Got Style, Toronto's newest menswear store and spa. For the people that brew it, geez, I, I'm really, I, all of us guys are really disheartened and we're disillusioned and we're disappointed in some of the people. Okay. And that's, I'm going to get you to do, uh, to promote what's coming up on, on uh, the next question. Just looking for this. Where I want you to say, uh, what were the best ones here, Todd? Right. 